Hello and welcome to my how-to video on how to hang a Graham and Brown mural wallpaper. You can see that there. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do it in three stages, mainly because I don't know how to link all the videos all together and there's nothing worse than seeing um, somebody papering the wall and taking 20, 30 minutes, 40 minutes or more to do it. So if we do it in stages, we'll start with the preparation. I'll tell you what I'm going to be doing and then we'll take it from there. And then at each stage, I'll stop the video, obviously do what I need to do and then carry on with it. To start with, I'll just show you what I've done now. We've got the wall here. I'll try and pan round. It's on autofocus so it'll um, move with it. It's just one wall. It's all prepared up. It doesn't need lining. The instructions say no need to line, strip any wallpaper off from before and lining paper. This has been prepared, sanded, filled, and then it's had a coat of Ticarilla Optiva 3 over the surface, so you can't really get a better surface than that. There's two coats gone on. Now what I've just done is nibbed it down. It was good anyway. I've nibbed it down so the surface is clean and dry and sound. You can see there. The idea is this is a paste the wall wallpaper so we'll paste the wall and hang the paper. There's a few things to um, be aware of with this. I'm not just taking the, the full wall in, I'm taking a bit of a, a curve or a flat piece. So with this wallpaper being wider, it's not gonna go in. So what we're gonna do is we're going to paper to there, we're gonna cut it, I'm gonna rehang the rest of that length of paper. If that makes sense, it'll, it'll make sense when I show you when I get the rollers going. Right, for now this is the wall. I'll just take the camera off the stand and I'll show you all the tools that we've got. So bear with me while I do that. Right, camera is off the stand and I'll take you through to where I'm actually working. You see what I've done? I've set up in the customer's lounge, got a sheet down. This is paste the wall so there shouldn't be too much mess. Right, for anybody who's doing this for the first time, there's a few tools that you're going to need. Obviously, the paste table is nice to work off. You've got your rolls of paper. I've got the um, straight edges for cutting. Shears, not scissors. Obviously, scissors are what hairdressers use. Decorators use shears. Pencils, make sure you've got a few pencils. HB pencils are the nicest. You could probably go a little bit harder. You don't want anything too soft. We've got a seam roller. I've got just a, a two and a half inch brush which is going to apply the adhesive to the wall for when I'm cutting in. And obviously in the other room, I've already got um, some paste and a roller ready. Don't forget, books of nice warm water, clean water. Don't forget that. Right, we've also got hanging brush. I've got a bit of a squeegee, whatever you want to call these, this spatula that applies vinyls. Really good to get into the corners and the angles, but still always have a nice hanging brush with you. Little electrical screwdriver, why do you need that? Well, I've got sockets to come off. So if you've got an electrical screwdriver in your pocket, it's dead easy just to whip off a socket to get paper behind. Obviously, proper ruler, always like to use well, there used to be boxwood rollers back in the day, obviously made of boxwood, now you can get them um, in plastic. This is obviously a metre long, which is feet and inches, you're looking at three foot three. So we use that, I work in feet and inches and metres, millimetres, centimetres, just as and when, it depends who I'm working with as well. Some of the chaps who work for us have been with us um, since 1966, so feet and inches is easier for them when you start saying how um, long a piece of length needs to be. Right, moving on from that, laser liner, brilliant. Hardly ever use um, a plumb bob anymore, laser liner is the way forward. When I've told you about what I've got on the table, I'll go back to show you the laser liner and how that works. That goes with that, so you can see the line in dark um, environments. Um, Snap-off blades. Stanley blades, no. You could find that the blade goes blunt pretty quick. So if you've got a snap-off blade, you can see this is an old blade. I'll swap that to a new one. 
I use an old packet to put the old blades in so we don't get those all over the floor but that just comes out dead easy you swap it to a new blade and you'll probably get one or two cuts out of a, a sharp point um, depending on the paper you're using you might get a few more you might get a few less but these um, old fur blades I must say are probably the best that I've used um, the black blades you can't go wrong uh, still keep a dust brush with me just in case when you take a, a socket off you drop any um, bits out the back it's nice just to dust them away right my next thing is I've got to show you not everybody does this I've got a packet um, packet of chalks there dark colors and I've got some pencils now the paper that I'm hanging is quite dark and you can see that I'm already prepared on the wall as a dark color so I'm not expecting any joints to spring and show a light color through it which you would get with lining paper when I'm using lining paper and doing um, a dark color obviously I put bands of emulsion down the wall where it's going to correspond with the actual joints of the paper on this instance I don't need to do that because obviously I've painted the whole wall so hopefully that won't um, affect me but what would affect me is when you look how dark the paper is it's going to be a red and a green the ends of the paper are light now for all intents and purposes I can hang paper and I can get butt joints but there might be the instance where the wall runs slightly out the paper moves slightly and you might when it's all dry see the light ends of the wallpaper now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get these pastel chalks I won't get them out because they'll be a bit dusty these are pastel chalks and what I'm going to do I'm going to rub that all over the end there to lose the white edge now it's obviously a water soluble because it's a chalk it can um, come off when it's wet but it does soak in I'll get the focus back on it does soak into the end so if that's all coloured in a dark colour and I think the colours I've got in there is probably a dark brown which would be ideal a dark colour doesn't matter how dark black dark brown will lose that light white edge when you hang it's just a precaution just in case any of the joints show and if you look at the instructions the instructions do say on dark coloured murals um, if required once the mural is completely dry you can touch the edges in with um, pastels or obviously the pencil cranes which I've got there they're all right if you can just see a little joint that needs um, rubbing in you obviously different colors you can rub the color across the surface and with it being a water-based sort of um, pencil you can just rub it in with your finger um, just wetting it in to lose the edge so for now I think that's all I need to discuss with you on the table of the tools that are required um, what I'm going to be doing is this is the second um, roll that I'll be working from because this mural is in eight lengths I've measured with plenty so I'm actually probably not going to be needing that part length there can you just see it yeah we've got one two three four five six seven and part of an eighth length now without opening this roll I've got a good feeling that part of the paper is printed and the other part isn't I know that because one side if you can see that you can see the first quarter of an inch looks dark the rest of it doesn't so I've got a good feeling that some of this roll isn't with a print now it says work left to right I'm a bit awkward I like working from right to left but I can work left to right no problem so the idea is we're going to hang the first length then the second third fourth and I've got a good feeling and I know how I've measured it I'll actually be cutting off from the se seventh length and that will be where my door frame is right I'm just going to show you now what we're going to do for this wall as you can see the wallpaper measures I've got a feeling it's 500 it's five 500 millimeters see that 500 mil now I've got a bit of a wall here I can't get the ruler in for 500 mil so this is where you will need it's going to be a bit awkward one-handed you are going to need the tape 
measure. So once I've put the camera down, what I'll measure is the distance between there and there. I'll do it three times. I'll do it at the top. I'll measure the top, across there, find out how wide it is. I'll do it across the middle, there, and I'll also do it across the bottom. I have measured this up and it comes in at roughly 30 centimetres, 300 mil. But what I need to do is make sure that I've got the widest part. Because what I'm going to do then is cut the paper on the board to the widest part that I need. So if the widest part of the this part of the wall is, let's call it 30 centimetres, I want to allow just enough to wrap round onto the flat wall. So if we say 33, 34, no more than five millimetres, that should give me top to bottom, oh we're hunting on the focus, just enough overlap that goes into that crease of a crevice for then the piece that I've cut off will then go on there and I can use the laser liner to rehang that. And you're going to ask me, why do we do that? Why do we cut into a, let's call it an internal angle? Well, if you don't, and you try and make that go in and then back out in one, that might not be true. I know it's not going to be true. That angle there is a lot better. I'm going to hang to that. I'm not going to worry about that one because I don't want to be cutting anything there. Obviously, I know that the paper is going to be good. So I'll hang to that. Let's wait for the clocks to finish chiming. Oh, they'll be going for a bit. We'll hang to there, and then the off cut of the piece of paper will go there. If you don't do that, and you try and get it in one, and then come back out, you'll find that the paper dries, and then we call it caravan. It'll balloon. It'll stretch, because it's obviously dried out, and then you'll see, we call it ballooning. It's caravans up. It's what you don't do into internal angles. So, to get rid of that, what we're going to do is cut it, and then just slightly overlap, you won't see it, it's not going to be noticeable. And then we hang a new piece and then we straight forward all the way down to the door frame. The only things we've got to be mindful of, we've got an alarm sensor up there, which I'm going to um, get disconnected, take it out. We're going to fall into an external cut there and an internal. That's all straightforward. That'll be the next part of the video that I will show you when I do that. And then we come into the internal angle. Obviously that just returns slightly more than there, but with the straight edges, we can get the blade round there, run a straight edge down with the blade, and we'll get a nice, clean, sharp cut. Obviously around the bottoms are a little bit tricky, you'll do that freehand, and across the tops there, we'll be done with this straight edge and the blade. Again, we've got sockets we'll remove when we get nearer to them. There's one there, so we've only got two. This is really a straightforward wall, nothing too complicated. You've just got to plan it, don't rush it, take your time, and away you go. But this paper should be a really nice one to do. It's paste the wall, it's a non-woven, it's the Graham and Brown top quality finish. Hides any imperfections because there's a bit of a texture to the paper. And I don't see any problems with this. The only thing I've got to do now is obviously chalk the ends of the paper. I'll get all the paper off and I'll cut each length and it's all marked one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'll have them all ready to hang. Obviously, like I've said, the first one, I will be cutting part of it through. So let's call it 35 centimeters will be cut in, hanging that, then the rest of that paper Will be rehung onto the wall and that's the way we're going to do it if we see a little bit of a white edge on there i will chalk it prior to hanging it obviously roll the paper up chalk it and then hang and then once we've wiped it down with some clean water not over uh, not being over um, rough with the um, wiping it down but it, once it's dry you can always go back to the colored pencils and just color that edge in but as it is, I don't think there'll be a problem with that. I don't think we're going to see it. But that's the way to do it. That's the way to do it correctly. So for now, I'll just put you back onto the stand. Get you in. 
flip my screen so I can see myself, I'm back. So for now, I'm gonna say, click like, don't forget to subscribe, press the bell, and the next one will be the part two of hanging the wallpaper. So for now, thank you very much. Don't forget any questions, write them in the comments below. Thank you.